Welcome to Construction Grammar. In this video, I'm going to talk about rules versus schemata or schemas. In the last couple of videos, I contrasted construction grammar with structuralism on the one hand and generative linguistics on the other hand. What both of these approaches have in common is that they assume that our language consists of meaningful elements, the words, which are then put into rules that have no meaning, that are purely structural. By now, you're not surprised that construction grammar takes a completely different point of view, arguing that four meaning pairings, constructions, are at the heart of grammar, from lexicon to syntactic patterns. In this video, I want to explore a bit more how rules actually differ from schemas, or schemata as they're sometimes called. Now, rules work in a fashion that you have an input and an output. And many approaches, structuralism and generativism, despite the fact that they are hugely different in their approach, assume that languages have meaningless rules that combine the words. So how do these rules differ from constructional schemas? Well, in many instances, rules and schemas will give you the same result. But I will show you that there are crucial pieces of evidence that argue for a constructional schema approach. Remember my favourite example, the un-x construction untrue, unfriendly, unhappy. If you adopt a rule-based approach, you treat these as input-output relationships. So you've got an unmorpheme, which needs to attach to an adjective and in the input, and that's going to give you unadjectives in the output. From a constructionist word-based approach, this looks slightly different. The idea is that in your input, you come across the adjectives like true, friendly, and happy, and these will allow you to generalize to a schema, a simple schematic construction with adjective on the formal level and the meaning being property. On the other hand, if you come across words like untrue, unfriendly, unhappy, you will generalize to an unadjective construction, which has the meaning of not property. So not true, not friendly, not happy. In the constructicon, in the mental network of constructions, these two schemas are going to be linked through a bidirectional arrow. So it's not the case that one is the input and the other one is the output, even though at one point, you know, children will learn one of these schemas earlier than the other. But once they exist, this is a two-way street. And that's why the bidirectional arrow is important, in contrast to the one-directional arrow um, that goes from input to output in the rule-based approach. Well, so far, both of the approaches, rule-based as well as word-based, seem to give us the same kind of phenomena, but there is a crucial difference. Remember Angucci? In one of the videos on YouTube, a kid used the phrase, this was so Angucci. Now, Gucci didn't exist in my lexicon as an adjective, so I couldn't use a rule that goes like Gucci to Angucci. In contrast to this, I had an unadjective schema that meant not property. So when I heard Angucci, I was able to match it against the schema and go like, well, I'm not 100% sure what Angucci means, but it means something like not having the property of being Gucci. And once you've got this element, once you've heard someone say this is so Angucci, because the relationship between the two schemata on the screen is bidirectional, I can also go in the other direction and I now know that I can use Gucci as an adjective. So whereas in an input-output kind of approach, you can only go from one element to the other. Output-based approaches also allow us to explain how we can get something like Angucci, which looks like an output that hasn't got an input. And there are other cases in the language where you have the output part, but not the input. So the verbs attract, suggest, and prohibit have corresponding nouns, attraction, suggestion, prohibition, as well as corresponding adjectives, attractive, suggestive, prohibitive. But what about illusion and elusive? So in the input-output model, attraction should be created by attract plus shun, suggestion, suggest plus shun, prohibition, prohibit, and shun. But illusion hasn't got an input, there is no elusive. So in our mental grammar, we have words for illusion and elusive, and we can see that these are linked in exactly the same kind of way as attraction and attractive and suggestion and suggestive are. But since there is no input, rule-based approaches could not explain this. In contrast to this, in a constructional approach, we assume that this is a network of schematic construction. So attract, suggest, and prohibit leads to a verbal construction 
that ends in a t on the form level and is linked to the meaning of an action on the meaning level. Attraction, prohibition and suggestion, on the other hand, are nouns that end in shun and that denote a thing. Attractive, suggestive and prohibitive, on the other hand, end in tuv and are marked as adjectives on the formal level. So an attractive man, the man is attractive, you use it like an adjective and on the meaning level it's got the meaning of a property, the property of being attractive, of being suggestive and so on. And once you've got these schemata, you can also have exceptions like illusion and elusive. So elusive is going to be linked to the adjective schema, and illusion is going to be linked to the noun schema, and in this case, it's just pure accident that you don't have a corresponding verb to this. So summing up, many approaches postulate rules which need an input to give you an output that are meaningless. Construction grammar instead postulates a network of schematic constructions, form meaning pairings. These two claims, whether you believe in rules or whether you believe in schemas, very often will give you similar results, but they crucially differ when it comes to things like ungucci or illusion elusive, and also they make orthogonal claims with respect to language acquisition, how the knowledge of constructions or the knowledge of rules ends up in the minds of speakers. This is something which we definitely need to look at more closely in the rest of our videos. Thank you once again for your attention. I hope you will join me soon for the next session on construction grammar.